Welcome to the Darknet Summary. In this month's episode, we'll take a look at the recent closure of 911 Proxy, the last of the original Big Free Proxy sites popular among cybercriminals due to its huge stockpile of clean IP addresses. The late July closure of 911.re follows in the footsteps of VIP72, which went down in 2021, and Luxox, which disappeared in January of this year. The repercussions of the fall of 911 are already evident as fraudsters struggle with less reliable alternative proxy services. As we know from our frequent investigations, fraudsters take advantage of the knowledge, tools and services found online that can help them mask their identities when committing fraudulent acts. One of the most popular methods to hide their true locations and IP addresses and attempt to fool anti-fraud systems is to use proxy services. Sites like 911 built up a reputation over the years to become one of the most trusted. But how did 911 beat the competition? Here to explain more is Netone's intelligence specialist, Michal Barbash. 911 was created in 2015 and its unique selling point was that it provided a residential proxy service. This is a type of proxy that is usually deployed on a user's device, desktop or mobile, with many users unaware that their device has become a relay for other users. To do this legally, service providers often trick victims when they download innocent-looking software or mobile apps, such as a flashlight, onto their devices. The trick is that the user usually accepts the terms of use without reading them, which allows the app to use the unsuspecting user's device as a proxy server. Each of those proxy servers would be a real user device with its own real history, one that would not raise suspicions. For various technical reasons, detecting a proxy based on a real user device is much harder than on a server. 911 claimed in the past that they got residential proxies from internet users who used their free VPN services, but as it became apparent in the July breach, they often got residential proxies from hacked machines. Victims would unintentionally install pirated or cracked software and then their device would become a 911 residential proxy server. On 19 July, Crepson Security highlighted how researchers proved that 911 proxies operate on hacked machines. Several hours later, 911 closed their registration process with a disclaimer that they are performing a security audit to prevent violations of their service. On the 28th of July, 911 claimed they were hacked and were not able to recover their infrastructure, forcing them to close down their site. We don't really know if there was any real hack attempt or if they just used this as a handy excuse for closing down. Michal, can you tell us how the cybercrime underworld reacted to the news of 911's demise? The closure of the last of the big three has created a gap in the market for other services to try and fill the void of becoming the biggest proxy vendor. In the meantime, fraudsters will have trouble finding clean IP address stockpiles to continue performing fraudulent acts. But this is only a temporary setback and all online businesses should not fall into a false sense of security. After all, global fraud rates continue to rise. There is also a possibility that the 911 team will return, but under another brand name. Sometimes, prominent threat actors go off-grid when there is too much fuss around them and return under a name completely unrelated to their previous venture. That's the end of the Darknet Summary. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast and tune in next month for the latest episode of the Darknet Summary. Our net one fraud prevention blog also contains a wealth of expert analysis on the dark web and anti-fraud issues in general, so feel free to check those out. If you wish to contact us regarding anything you've heard in this podcast or have general suggestions for us, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Send us an email to contact at netone.com. 